Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to talk about internet domains. And um, this is an interesting little point of interest because of some recent news and some things that have been going around. So, of course, if you remember back to December, just a month ago from when I'm recording this, that um, these <laughs> this was probably one of the most intriguing email scam lists going around because basically it said, yes, um, people are in physical danger. Give us a bunch of Bitcoins or else you're going down. And uh, this was sent out to, I mean, thousands. Um, I think the local high school may have encountered it. I know Penn State main campus had several departments have this email sent um, all over the place. So literally every country, whatever. So basically you got this email and it was basically like, I inform you that my man carried, yeah, I mean, you can easily tell um, hooked on phonics didn't work for these morons. Um, and basically they're saying, give us $20,000, uh, of Bitcoin or else, you know, you, your life, your business, whatever is, is Kapui. Well, it actually turns out that this email list is related to this one that I did a video on just a few weeks back. When did I do this? December 23rd. And, uh, you probably all have seen this email land in your spam boxes at some point in time, basically saying, Hey, I caught you doing nasty stuff on the internet. And, uh, if you don't pay me some money, uh, in my Bitcoin wallet here, then, um, you know, then I'm going to release this, all the social media. It's like, yeah, you know, a, I wouldn't be doing any of that kind of stuff with a web camera on a computer. B what social media, um, C, you know, <laughs> Yeah, no, not happening. Um, and one of the things that I looked at, because I have so many different emails I control, I've been keeping an eye on these Bitcoin wallets. And it's like the Bitcoin wallets are all seemingly random. So it's kind of interesting to see uh, what's going on here. In fact, I don't even know why they blocked out the Bitcoin wallet. Dude, don't block out the Bitcoin wallet. This is the Bitcoin wallet. These are kind of public things. When these Bitcoin numbers are out there and we report these numbers, then people are like, oh, you're aware that this is used in a scam, right? And it actually makes it, the more you show these numbers, the easier it is to track them down because hint for the scammers, Bitcoin is not untraceable. Okay, it's not. It's public. It's a public record. Um, Bitcoin is not untraceable. They can be stink. But anyway, these two email scams are actually very related. They seem to be doing on uh, basically coming from the same group. And they call this, I think they call this the spammy bear, I think. Um, well, it actually turns out as a weakness in GoDaddy, among other guys. Now, GoDaddy's not the only one involved here, but they are the biggest because they control more domains than most others. And GoDaddy is the one place where people buy a lot of domains and just leave them sit there. So we'll talk about how this works here in a minute. Um, but let me grab, so spammy bear is what this is, uh, is what this is being called. So basically what happens is people buy domains and they don't necessarily hook, hook them up to a server. You buy the domain, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do something with this domain. And then you just leave it sit there and you don't actually do anything with it. And, uh, it turns out that the, these emails were traced back and they found domains attached to the emails. They were owned by Expedia and Mozilla and Yelp and other big name companies. So people are like, uh, what's going on? Were these companies hacked? No, it was a weakness primarily in GoDaddy. Literally every single domain linked back to this scam was on GoDaddy servers, but it turns out that this is a vulnerability we've known about for several years and a small school um, blogger um, and who has also knew some security stuff actually first reported this. And I actually, after looking into this, I actually found that there were articles criticizing GoDaddy for how they're managing their things back since at least 2015. So all this spammy stuff could have stopped, been stopped a long time ago if people heeded the warnings of this guy who put this information out there. I'm trying to find the link to his site. It's in here somewhere. Um, so Matthew Bryant and uh, the, his, uh, this is actually his article. Now this, his article here goes back to 2016. I actually found articles actually going back to 2000. 
15 on this very issue. So this is an old issue. And what happens is that, you know, these companies and big companies particularly buy up boatloads of domains, you know, Expedia, Socks.com, Expedia, you know, um, whatever else. You buy them up and then you just don't do anything. You just sit there and squat on them so that, you know, nobody else can buy them. But what else do you do? Well, what happens is, uh, what happens is that when you have a domain and you don't actually point it anywhere, then what ends up happening is it lands kind of in this place where they do a page like this. And this is a domain that is controlled by one of my clients. And I threw this domain in here. And um, basically, these just kind of sit here. Now this one here, while it looks vulnerable, it's actually not. I actually fixed all of the domains in this client's uh, system today. It took a long time. Um, and so what we did is we got these fixed to mitigate against this issue. But for whatever reason, GoDaddy still shows this page. And when a domain is a, tech a technically orphaned, it sits on the domain. There's a domain controller for it, but there's not a host record going to it. Now, for security, a good server will land you on this page. This means a server has captured it and is not letting much go. Still potentially vulnerable, but not as easy. So how does this exploit work? Well, it turns out that GoDaddy has a pile of name server things. And they're, you know, NS1, NS2, all the way on up to, I've seen into the hundreds. And they're ns1.domaincontrol.com. So if you see domaincontrol.com in a host record, it is a GoDaddy domain. And what happens is GoDaddy distributes these domains across a variety of different servers, and then they just sit there on the server with nothing happening to it. And what happens particularly in GoDaddy and why GoDaddy is particularly vulnerable to this is that all of their name server groups are linked together. And so if you control a domain on GoDaddy, no one else can come in and create another domain record on GoDaddy which is like, well, that makes sense, but you might wanna do something like that for a dev server, okay? Now, what happens is if they were, if it, if it worked like a smaller hosting company and they sequestered these into different groups, you could in theory do this, but GoDaddy doesn't, and it leaves a big vulnerability. So what ends up happening is the domain sits there, there is a host record for it, but there's no server on it. And so you get a page like this one, so this is the tlml.link domain, which if you go to it right now, points to this. Now, what anybody on GoDaddy could literally do is if you identify one of these domains and they're easy to spot because they have a page that looks like this, all you literally have to do is come into your cPanel, create an add-on domain, Give it the domain name. This is tlml.link. Add the domain. Okay. And with that, I'm going to come back over to this one. We're going to go into our file manager. And now what should happen here is we will have a folder for it. Oh, look at this. And now let's go ahead and just create something. Let's go ahead and I should be able to create a file. There we are. Um, let's do index.php and let's edit the file. Um, now I don't want to save the file. I'd like to edit the file. There we are. Uh, we're going to edit the file and we've got pwned. Save the changes. And it might take a few moments. Yeah, it's going to take me a few moments, uh, particularly since the uh, I need to clear the the brash the the cache out on the browser. Let me just see if I can. Actually, there's something I can do here. Let me go into history, and let me find.
I might have to reset the, um, let me just, let me try this. Let me just create this in a new uh, private window. Switch the private window over so you guys can see it. And this should work. It might, like I said, it might take just a few moments. There we are. Now we've just successfully taken over the domain. <laughs> okay. That is literally how easy it is because what they do is the domain is sitting there, but not actually being used when it's sitting there. And so what ends up happening is someone can come in here, drop it inside of their control panel, and now just create an email, they can scam it out, they can do all sorts of things, and then they can abandon their free account. That's how easy it works because they don't have a system in place to prevent the domain from being inappropriately added to somebody else's account. That is literally how easy it is to pull off this heist. Now, there's could be some more slight complexities, but overall, that's the general principle behind how it works. Now, what can you do about it? That is our important part. So, number one, if you own any domains, you are absolutely always make sure they are pointing to a server. Okay, that server could be whatever, just point them somewhere. You're gonna need to have a server put um, to point them to. Otherwise your domain is vulnerable. So keep some cheap, as cheap as you can, maybe a free server, point to that, keep it going, whatever. Uh, you can do that kind of stuff. The second thing, the what makes my particular setup very secure is that I'm using what are called glue records. And a glue record basically means that I'm not using anybody's name servers, even A2 hosting. I'm not using their name servers. I'm using my name servers. Um, so when you go into any of the domains controlled by me that I own, it pings back to my name servers. Now you have to be on only my server has access to those name servers. So the absolute best thing you can do when you buy a domain, get some glue servers, um, um, some glue records set up, point those glue records to your own server and change your domain name record, your DNS settings to your glue records. Basically, it's your own ns1.yourdomain.com. Set that up, point all of your domains to that, and then the best security, then go into your hosting control panel or your C panel and create a server for each of those. Create a V host for each of those. If you're on basic Apache, whatever you're doing, make sure your domains are always pointed somewhere. What happened with this case is it was the orphaned domains that were co-opted. And when these orphaned domains were co-opted, anybody on any other server that those domain names were pointed to can actually get in and take over the domain if you're not using it first. That is how frightening this is. And so, yeah, we probably need to control and have a little bit better way to have this uh, to have this um, this working. This is not exclusive to GoDaddy. Um, in fact, the guy that did the original security re research on this, uh, he personally found security vulnerabilities in um, Google Cloud, Amazon's Route 53, so that's AWS, Rackspace, and DigitalOcean in addition to GoDaddy. So a lot of companies are potentially susceptible to this. It just has to do with what happens when a domain is, uh, when a server goes down and the records are still pointed to your name servers. That's literally what it is. So honestly, this is kind of frightening stuff. The best take home message is if you control any web domains, make sure they're always pointed to a server and if possible, create your own glue records for your, uh, for your servers. Now you need a server to go into. Of course, this is where I use A2 hosting for mine. So uh, if you use the link tlm.li forward slash A2H, then you will find uh, that is my affiliate link for A2 hosting. And uh, this is a great place to host your domains. I have my uh, glue records are, you know, are pointed to my VPS over here. This is what I'm using as a VPS. 
Um, but uh, if, whether you need shared, reseller, hosting, dedicated, um, any type of hosting, check out um, check out A2 Hosting. I, uh, I've been using their services for I think about a year, year and a half now. Really like their really like their pricing. Really like how how everything works. Uh, you can get managed or you can get unmanaged servers. Everything over there works pretty good. Uh, so if uh, if you do not uh, if you do not have your domains pointed to a server, make sure your domains are pointed to a server, or this spammy bear might come and take them over. That is right. That is right. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.